Let's talk about running backs that you should start or sit in week five of fantasy football. It's very important that you know that the Lions, Chargers, Eagles, and Titans are all on by, so you will not have access to David Montgomery, Jameer Gibbs, J.K. Dobbins, Saquon Barkley, Tony Pollard, a lot of superstar running backs that you will not have available to you to play I got you though today. I'm going to help you figure out your lineups. We'll talk through all 28 teams, 14 matchups in total. The first matchup we'll look at here is the Bucks at the Falcons. This is Thursday night football, a nice divisional matchup. You'll see that's a trend this week. So many divisional games, 43 and a half point over under and the Falcons are favored at home. Let's start with the Falcons side of the ball. Look, I know Bijan Robinson has not been the player you Drafted him to be just yet, but I'm still going to label him a must start. Bucks are a top 10 matchup for fantasy running backs through four weeks. Currently dealing with a hamstring injury, so that is something that we do need to monitor. Of course, if Bijan were to miss this week, Tyler Algier jumps into a must start for me in a very good offense. But if you look through the first four weeks, you can see Bijan Robinson is averaging 17.8 touches per game, Tyler Algier around seven and a half. So it's I understand the concern around Bijan, but he's absolutely still someone that needs to be in your starting lineup. As far as the Bucks go, this is a very confusing backfield, all right? Last week, the coaches said, Bucky Irving has earned more snaps. And then in week four, you can see Rashad White only touched the ball one more time than Bucky Irving. The snap share went down for Rashad White. It went up for Bucky Irving. Bucky Irving got goal line touches. He got the touchdown I mean, it's a little bit confusing to digest this backfield right now. Here's what I will say. Because there are so many buys, I would label both of these guys a spot start. You can throw them out there. They're a part of a good offense. They're going to get 10 to 15 touches, each of them. So in theory, you can play these guys, but we need to lower our expectations for both of those names. Let's move on to the first international game of the year. North London, if you will. We've got the Jets at the Vikings. This is a 9.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time game, so make sure you get your lineup set early this week. All right, Brees Hall. It's getting a little confusing, I'm not going to lie. The way they're us utilizing Braylon Allen has to be concerning if you are a Brees Hall owner. Here's what I'll say. Last week, the weather was a huge problem. Braylon Allen, this huge bowling ball of a body, it made sense to kind of give him some more opportunities. But again, let's go through the same exercise. Through the first four weeks, you can see Brees Hall is averaging 20 touches per game. Braylon is averaging nine. If you take away week one, he's more averaging like 11 to 12 touches per game. So clearly, Braylon Allen is going to be a problem for Brees Hall managers. You have to be aware of that. You have to accept that. The ceiling of a Brees Hall is going to be slightly limited on a week-to-week -week basis, especially now that they're talking about giving Braylon Allen some touches on the goal line. However, Brees Hall still remains a must start for me. My RB7 on the week. The Vikings defense is not giving up many points to fantasy running backs, but Brees Hall is just an elite talent. I think he'll figure it out. Now, as far as the Vikings go, Aaron Jones is maybe one of the best picks in fantasy through four weeks. One of our bounce back candidates along with Chris Godwin this year. He is an absolute must start. And honestly, it's so fun to see Aaron Jones in a role where he is just dominating opportunities. In week three, he had 25 touches. In week four, he had 27 touches. This is a guy who is uber talented and in Green Bay was always stuck in a rotation with A.J. Dillon or Jamal Williams. So it's so exciting to see him do his thing. It is a tough matchup. Both of these defenses are pretty good against running backs. But of course, you're going to start Aaron Jones, the RB7 through four weeks. Absolute cash if you drafted him. Okay. This brings us to the start of the 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time slate of games on Sunday. Panthers at Bears. This is the Bryce Young, Caleb Williams trade type of game. You know, these two franchises are battling it out now after making that trade and living with the consequences. 42 and a half point over under the Bears are favored at home. Chuba Hubbard is an absolute smash start for me. The Bears are top 10 in points allowed to fancy running backs right now at the time of recording this. And Chuba Hubbard is dominating touches. In week three, 26 opportunities. In week four, he has 22 opportunities and he gets 74% of the snaps. He is that dude in an offense led by Andy Dalton that is much, much better. I mean, Chuba Hubbard haven't, hasn't averaged under 5.4 yards per carry in any of the last three weeks. This offense is looking so much better. They know they can throw, so now the run is opening up. Chuba Hubbard, a locked and loaded top 15 play for me this week. And as far as DeAndre Swift, this is a very difficult 
backfield to really figure out right now. However, when you combine all of the buys we're currently dealing with and the fact that this matchup is so juicy, the Panthers give up the second most points to fantasy running backs. I can't help but label DeAndre Swift a must start. Through three weeks, the first three weeks, he's averaging 1.8 yards per carry. And then in week four, he goes absolutely nuclear. I mean, no one really saw it coming if we're honest, but he's got to be back in your lineups. And Rashawn Johnson, I would say is a spot start if you need a desperate play. He did get the goal line touchdown. So that is something to be excited about. All right. The fourth matchup we'll look at, this is an AFC North showdown. The Ravens at the Bengals, two great franchises battling it off. We'll start with the Ravens. The Bengals are a top 15 play for your fantasy running back. And Derrick Henry has been absolutely dominating. The King is back. They said he was washed. Come on. Come on. We knew this guy wasn't washed. He's joining one of the best rushing offenses in the NFL. And he's dominating every single week. The last two weeks, he's had over 150 yards in both games, averaging six yards per attempt versus the Cowboys, over eight yards per attempt versus the Buffalo Bills. They're using him in the air as well. It is so exciting if you own Derrick Henry. Can you tell? I own him in the Flock League. I am absolutely thrilled to have him. Justice Hill is a fine desperation play spot start because of the targets he's getting through the air. So you can totally put him out there if you're in a tough spot. And then on the opposite side of the ball, Zach Moss is still technically the start in Cincinnati. He had 60% of the snaps compared to 40% for Chase Brown, and he had one more opportunity, but the change of the guard could be soon, so that is something to be slightly concerned about. And I will also just say, this is not a matchup I want to target. I'm putting Zach Moss as a must start because so many running backs are out, so he's moved up my rankings to RB22, but you have to recognize with this matchup that it's not really one that you want to target, but Zach Moss is on such a good offense, I can totally see why you would want to put him in your lineup and just trust the touches on the goal line. All right, the fifth matchup we'll look at is the Bills at the Texans. 46 and a half point over under. The Texans are favored at home versus the Bills. This should be a really fun game. Let's start with the Texans. I am hoping, I'm believing, I'm speaking it into life. We almost saw Joe Moneybags last week. I believe this is the week Joe Mixon comes back from that injury, and it is a sweet matchup to come back for because the Bills give up more fantasy points to running backs than any team in the NFL right now. They're getting cooked on a weekly basis, so Joe Mixon, a top six play for me. Look, if Mixon is out, sure, you can play Cam Akers, but I'm not going to be excited about it. I'm not going to pretend to be excited about it. He hasn't been a reliable start in the last two weeks without Mixon. Speaking of getting cooked, how about James Cook? A must start, the RB9 for me this week on a great offense. Look, guys, I know he had a bad game versus Baltimore, but you have to look at the totality of his season, getting a high percentage of the carries, getting used in the air, the RB8 overall through four weeks. Of course, this guy's got to be in your lineup on a high-powered offense. All right, at number six, let's talk about Colts at Jags, another divisional matchup, 45 and a half point over under, and um, <clears throat> the Jags are favored... They're going to be wearing the throwback uniforms. Maybe that the aura is giving them the favorite. I don't know what FanDuel's thinking here. I don't know what Vegas is talking about, but they are favored. Let's talk about those Jags. Colts are a decent matchup. They actually give up a lot of rushing yards per game, but they're not giving up as many fantasy points to the running back position. I know a lot of people are going to be nervous to start ETN, but I still think you've got to put them out there. You know, dealt with the injury to begin the game last week, came back in, still saw 13 touches compared to seven for Tank Bigsby. So clearly Etienne is still the guy to start in this backfield. So we're going to play him in what should be a good divisional matchup. Now let's talk about the Colts because it is a difficult situation to digest at the moment. I am ranking these two running backs as if they are both starting this week. So let me explain. If Jonathan Taylor plays, this is how I would rank him. If Jonathan Taylor does not play and Sermon starts, this is how it would rank Trey Sermon. So we are aware that Jonathan Taylor could miss time with an ankle injury. It's very confusing. They're saying it's not that serious and he's not going to go on IR. Is this a Joe Mixon situation? Does he miss this week? Does he miss multiple weeks? But of course, if Taylor plays versus the Jags, a top 10 matchup for running backs, you have to start him. Now, if Taylor doesn't play, Trey Sermon becomes my RB17 in my rankings, an absolute must start in an incredible matchup and an offense that is hopefully led by Joe Flacco. But yes, Sermon is an incredible spot start, maybe the best spot start this week if JT does not play. All right, at number seven, let's talk Dolphins at Patriots. Divisional game that we are all super excited to watch, right guys, right? 
Yeah, we're all really excited to watch this one. Uh, I'm not even sure if Dolphin or Patriot fans are excited to watch this game, but look, Devon Achan is going to remain a must start. I know the games have not been good so far. Clearly, I've moved him down my rankings. With Tua, he was a top five play at the position. Now he's more of a top 20 play. He does still get involved in the air. And the hope is that versus New England, uh, this team can figure it out a little bit more. And as far as Ramondre Stevenson, you couldn't have asked for a better matchup for him to try and bounce back. The Dolphins are a top seven matchup for your fantasy running backs. And Ramondre Stevenson needs a good matchup to really bounce back. And let me tell you guys, if he does, try and sell him high, okay? But Here's the issue with Ramondre Stevenson. The guy can't hold on to the damn ball. Let's figure out how to fix this issue, New England. Do you need to do some psychotherapy or something on Ramondre's brain? Because when in, you brought Antonio Gibson in, there's this bad juju in the locker room now, and it's transferred over to Ramondre Stevenson. He's lost his monster powers. That's what's happening right now. But look, Stevenson is definitely a fine play in a good matchup. Let's hope he bounces back. This is tied for the lowest over under of the week with 36 and a half points. So it might be a tough watch, but that's actually good for Ramondre Stevenson that this is such a low over under. It means he'll still be able to be used in this game. All right, at number eight, let's talk Browns at Commanders. 43 and a half point over under. And the Commanders are favored at home. Let, and uh, who are we? Okay. I mean, can I, can I be excited? Can I be excited for my team? I mean, I was born a Washington fan, and it has been hell. I mean, the 2012 season with RG3 was the only one I was excited about. This is the most fun I've ever had as a Washington fan. But we are favored at home. Brian Robinson is dominating. An absolute must start regardless of if Austin Eckler comes back or not from that concussion. So far, Brian Robinson is the RB10 through four weeks. He's dominating. He looks great. He has a touchdown in every game outside of week number two. And now he gets to face the Browns who are kind of in disarray right now. Their defense is actually pretty good, but their offense keeps sputtering, so it allows other offenses to stay on the field. And if you think about it, the Commanders have only punted the ball one time in the last three weeks. Of course, a guy who is the lead running back in that offense is someone you want to play because he's going to have so many scoring opportunities. So absolutely, Brian Robinson is a must start for me. And Eckler is actually one of my favorite spot starts should he... Um, be healthy for this. And I think he should be healthy. It's been a full week from that concussion. But even last week, we saw Jeremy McNichols go out there and get two touchdowns as a reliever back. Eckler looks so good. He looks like prime version of himself. So he is a great spot start uh, in this matchup if he is back and healthy. Now, as far as Jerome Ford, I think he's a great play as well. My RB20 this week, 17 touches last week. So he kind of went back to reclaiming the RB1 role for the Cleveland Browns. And it's a good matchup versus the Commanders who are our top 12 play in fantasy right now. All right, moving on to an AFC West showdown. Raiders at Broncos. This is the start of the afternoon slate of games. We have four games in the afternoon that you need to be aware of. The over-under is 36 and a half points. The Broncos are favored at home. They just beat the Jets. At no point in that game did I think the Broncos were going to win, and they pulled it out. That was insane. Now, let's be honest. I don't care about a single running back in this matchup. There's not a single running back in this matchup I'm excited to talk to you guys about. I don't trust Antonio Pierce at all. Zamir White is not playing well, and they're not using him on the goal line. Pass. Alexander Madison isn't getting enough touches to use. Pass. Javante Williams, sure, you can throw him out there, but every other week his usage changes. It's like the weather with this guy. It's like, uh, I got 10 touches. Now I have 17. Now I have eight. Now Tyler Bidet's a lead back. Oh, we're going to give Jaleel McLaughlin. I mean, what are you supposed to do with this backfield? Sure, you can throw Javante out there. He had 19 touches last game. He played 57% of the snaps. But what if Sean Payton's like, you know what? I'd like Jaleel McLaughlin to have a game. It's like, how are you supposed to trust this backfield at all? I don't want to talk about this game. All right, it's just going to make me upset. All right, at number 10, Cardinals at 49ers, an NFC West game, 49 and a half point over under. The Niners are heavy favorites the largest spread of the week the cardinals are seven and a half point dogs and this is also the highest over under of the week so if you do some quick maths the 49ers are expected to score more points pretty much than any other team in the nfl this year and yes that graphic is not wrong jordan mason is my rb1 in fantasy football for week number five. That's true. I would not start any other player over Jordan Mason. Coming off a 27-touch game last week versus the Patriots, 
where he scored 24 points, got into the end zone, and he also had a huge receiving touchdown that was called back due to a penalty. Now he faces the Cardinals, who Brian Robinson and Jeremy McNichols just dominated. A part of an offense that's super good in San Francisco, I'm sorry, this is my RB1. I don't know how you sit Jordan Mason in any league. Let's talk about the other side of the ball, though. James Conner is definitely in play. He has scored over 18 PPR points in three out of four games this year, so he is totally in play. He really is one of the focal points of their offense. All right, moving on to Packers at Rams, 47 and a half point over under. The Cheeseheads are favored at at Los Angeles, actually, and this is the third highest over under of the week, so we should see a lot of fantasy points in this one. Josh Jacobs. If you drafted him, it's been uber disappointing. I mean, we thought with no Marshawn Lloyd and no A.J. Dillon, they were just going to feed Josh Jacobs. And in week two, they did that. He had 32 rushing attempts. But pretty much since that point onwards, he and Emmanuel Wilson have had very similar roles. What I will say is keep in mind, guys, last week versus the Vikings, there wasn't a single moment the Packers could breathe. They were down the entire game, multiple touchdowns down, so they couldn't really establish the run with Josh Jacobs like they wanted to. I think that will be different versus the Rams. The Rams are a top five matchup for your fantasy running back, so I do think Jacobs has a great chance to bounce back in a huge way here, and I'm not really going to start Emmanuel Wilson, but if you're desperate enough, you can make a case for it. On the opposite side of the ball, Kyron Williams is an absolute superstar. He remains a superstar. He has at least one touchdown in every single game so far this year. The dude is a superstar. You got to play him. We all know that. All right. The 12th matchup we'll look at here is the Giants at the Seahawks. 41 and a half point over under. Seattle are heavy favorites heading into this game. And Ken Walker, an absolute must star. I mean, coming off a three touchdown game versus the Detroit Lions, the most difficult matchup in fantasy. I mean, they were giving up the fewest points. Guys, the Lions are giving up eight points to running backs. And Ken Walker just scored three touchdowns on them. Of course, you're going to start him versus the New York Giants. Look, I don't really want to start Zach Charbonnet. I think most of his value came through the air today. Well, I'm recording this when Monday Night Football ended. And in theory, I don't think the Seahawks will be down and needing to throw the ball to the running backs in this game. Now, as far as Devin Singletary... You can make the case that because he's the number one running back on the Giants, you can throw him out there as a volume play, but I wasn't that comfortable playing him last week versus Dallas in a good matchup, and I just don't feel like I can say he's a must start. Sure, you can throw him out there, but just have very low expectations. If he gets 10 points per game, you should be happy about that. All right, the 13th matchup we'll look at here is the Cowboys at the Steelers on Sunday night football this should be a fun one in, in theory, right? It should be fun. I mean, the Steelers' offense is, is tough to watch at times, but Najee Harris is getting so many opportunities, especially with the Jalen Warren injury. Uh, last week, he had 19 total opportunities, including six targets. Without Jalen Warren, he's being used in the air, and that gives him such a safe floor. So he is the definition of on the edge of spot start versus must start. In smaller leagues, I think you might have a better option, but if you're in a 12 or 14 man, you've got to put him out there. Incredible matchup. The Cowboys give up the third most points to fantasy running backs. It should work, right? Well, in theory, it should, because last week we had the same case with Indianapolis, who was a great matchup, but Najee Harris only scored 10 fantasy points. So in theory, it should work, but I could see a scenario where it doesn't. And then for the Cowboys, look, you can throw Rico Daddle out there. The Rico Dowdle truthers are going to be excited about what, about what they saw last week. I don't want to be Debbie Downer here, but if they actually hold up that holding call where Rico Dowdle had the screen for a uh, receiving touchdown, then Rico Dowdle has like four points last week. So I just want you to temper your expectations because this is a very difficult matchup versus the Steelers. The Steelers are giving up, um, they're a bottom three matchup for your fantasy running back. It's very difficult to score points against them as a fantasy running back. So Lower your expectations. You can play him because he's a part of a great offense, but I'm not super excited to play Rico Dowdle myself. And the last game we'll talk about is Monday Night Football Saints at Chiefs. 42 and a half point over under, and the Chiefs are heavy favorites at the time of recording this video. Kareem Hunt is a must start. I, I know. Is this bold? I don't feel like it is, but Kareem Hunt is a must start. Guys, it was his first game, still learning this new offense, And he completely dominated touches for the Chiefs. He had 17 opportunities in his first game back as a Kansas City Chiefs. Carson Steele 
had two carries. He fumbled the ball. He's already been dealing with fumble issues. And they said, you know what? That was fun. You lost your job. Go sit on the bench. Carson Steele is not a problem anymore. And then Samaj P. Ryan, who vultured the touchdown, but he only had five total touches in the entire game compared to Kareem Hunt's 17. So I think on a very good offense, I'm totally starting Kareem Hunt this week. I'm ready to be hurt by it, but he's definitely in my lineups if I have him. And then Alvin Kamara, you know this. He is the RB1 on the year. Notorious my guy. We were drafting him everywhere. It feels good so far through four weeks. The RB1 overall, he's absolutely killing it. You know you're going to play him. All right, guys, what do you think? Those are all the matchups we'll talk about this week. A little bit shorter than normal because there's not as many games. Do me a favor. Go ahead and smash that like button to show some love. Subscribe if you like the content. And the last thing I'll say is if you have a difficult start sit question or a trade question you want me to answer, check out the pinned comment. There's a link to our website where you can ask me a question at any time. If you haven't created an account yet, you can get one for free. Use the promo code LAND. And if you do, you'll get access to the calculator for free, expert consensus rankings for free, the league analyzer for free. It's a great tool over there on the Flock site. I appreciate you for watching the video. Good luck this week. And I'll see you very soon with wide receiver start sits releasing later in the day hold up now that those idiots are done talking who needs some rankings hell yeah i need some rankings then use promo code land l-a-n-d for 30 percent off any membership at flockfantasy.com oh